Hi. In this video, I'll explain about capacitors in parallel and the concept of charge distribution, the concept of potential, and about the concept of potential difference. So here you can see a battery, and there's an orange wire which is taken from the positive of the battery and connecting to a, a blue turquoise blue bus bar, and from there there are little wires connecting to three capacitors which are placed in parallel. The capacitors, let's say, are one, two, and three, and the plates that are facing us uh, are all conductors which are connected by a solid wire to the positive of the battery and therefore they will all be at the same potential. So all the pluses there are at the identical potential. The other plates of each of these capacitors on the other side are connected again by a solid wire, that blue wire, to the negative terminal of the battery. So all those plates on the back side are also going to have the same potential as the negative terminal of the battery. This is the first step to understand the battery and the capacitors as a system. So anything which is connected between these two turquoise blue bus bars will have the same potential difference. So let's talk about potential difference. The battery itself has a potential difference between the positive and negative terminal. And because these three plates on the right hand side have the same potential and these three plates on the other side have the same potential as the negative side of the battery therefore the potential difference between the plus and the minus side is same for all these three capacitors that's the whole idea of a parallel system now let's look at a still image for the uh, left hand side of these uh, capacitors so these three conductors will have the same minus sign and the same potential as that negative terminal of the battery. The question is, what is different then? The difference is, is in the charge distributions. So the battery provides a charge of plus Q and minus Q. Minus Q appears uh, on the negative side. If you look at a top view, and I've written there the plus Q and minus Q on top of those wires, they will get divided at that junction into the three capacitors. So each capacitor will have its own charge. So you'll have Q1 for capacitor number 1, charge Q2 for capacitor number 2, and charge Q3 for capacitor number 3. The potentials will be identical, as we said before, for all the plates on the right-hand side, and, and the negative potentials will be identical for all the plates on the left-hand side with the negative of the battery. The potential differences will also be identical for all these three capacitors. I've just given an example of 12 volts there uh, just to have some numbers while we discuss this uh, difference. So the easy way to remember this is that if the potential differences are same for capacitors which are put in a line, then their charge distributions uh, have to be different. The system is important to understand here. And here the meaning of system is anything which is connected between those two turquoise blue bars. They're all in parallel. And anything in parallel will have the same potential difference as the battery potential difference or the battery EMF. So I hope this was clear to understand the difference between the word potential and the word potential difference. Let's look at a 2D circuit. So I have named the capacitors as 1, 2, and 3. And as we know, uh, whichever is connected by a solid wire to the positive of the battery will have the same potential. So V1 is all lined up on the left-hand side plates of these parallel plate capacitors. The right-hand side plates of 1, 2, and 3 are all mentioned as having a potential V0 because all these three are connected by solid wires to the negative terminal of the battery. Therefore, the two plates of each of these capacitors is having a uh, uh, a potential difference of V1 minus V0 across those two plates with the dielectric in between. So if we take the first capacitor, Q, the charge on the first capacitor is generally equal to Cv, therefore Q1 will be equal to C1 into V1 minus V0. Since we put V0 equal to 0, therefore it will be C1 V1. This is how you start deriving. Now if we come to the second capacitor, Q2 again will be equal to C2 into V1 minus V0. We put 
V0 as 0, therefore the C2 into V1. So that's how we uh, start uh, uh, deriving the uh, charge distribution among these three capacitors in parallel. Coming to the third capacitor, Q3 again will be equal to C3 into the same potential difference, which is V1 in this case. So it's becoming simpler now. So we have fixed the charges that got distributed among those three uh, parallel capacitors. So now we know that the battery gives a plus Q charge, which is written on top of that line, and a minus Q charge. So battery charge total is Q. So let's add up these individual charges. So Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 must be equal to the total charge supplied by the battery, which is Q. So C1 V1 plus C2 V1 plus C3 into V1 is equal to Q. So branch the C1 plus C2 plus C3 together, and therefore you will get uh, the equation that you see there, and C1 plus C2 plus C3 will be equal to Q by V1. This leads us to the total equivalent capacitance of such a combination. So the equation very clearly is the C total is C1 plus C2 plus C3. The charge on that system in between those two bus bars will be Q equal to C total into V1. This is the charge supplied by the battery. I hope uh, this video was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.